Okay, so welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be looking at supporting teaching assistants with Education City. So whether you yourself are a teaching assistant looking at the ways that Education City can help you, or you're a teacher looking at the ways that you can use Education City alongside your um, TA, LSA, HLTA, um, this is what we are going to be doing today. Now, first of all, I apologise for my screen. For some reason, the um, slideshow function isn't working today, so I'm afraid we've just got this screen. Um, but what we're essentially going to be looking at um, are the grouping function, so enabling you to obviously create little focus groups or intervention groups um, for yourself or your um, TA to use. Then we're going to be looking at sort of the creating and sharing of the um, the my cities so the my city folders that we can pop work into there is a way that you can actually share those with other people and then we're just gonna have a quick look at a couple of the tools that we've got um, some of them brand new for this academic year that you could use within um, sort of group learning or for one-to-one -one learning as well so um as I mentioned, my name's Hayley, but just to let you know, the account I'm going to be using is a made up school. So please don't worry about any names, whether staff or student that you might see, they are all made up. And um, the other thing is, it is also an English account. So if you are joining today from outside of England, uh, just be aware that some of the areas might not be the same as when you log in. It will have the same features and um, just might look slightly different for you. Um, other thing is if you're um, watching this with us and you've got any questions for me, um, in our live webinar you are able to um, click on the Q&A function just there. That will um, ask me a question sort of within the, uh, the live webinar and I'll be able to answer those for you there and then. Now you can um, click on anonymous as well and it will show you show me sorry your question anonymously um alternatively wait until the end and i can give you my email address that you can send your questions over to right i think that is just about everything so um let's head over to educationcity.com where we can begin so here we are logged in to my education city account my fake school you can, if you're following on today or if you're watching this webinar in your own time, you can obviously use the classic view if you wish to. I just find that the new view, clicking on that ribbon just there, um, it's got a couple more features to it, such as the work overview feature. Um, and I just find it's got a bit, a bit more flow to it. So this is what I'm going to be using. So starting off with the groups function. This is something that's really going to be um, important if you are asking your students to work in particular ability groups, whether that's within different subject areas, different units within those subject areas, or off the back of maybe any assessments that have been done through Education City or otherwise. Um, so what you can do is you can head over to the Manage Users section. Now you'll have your students, your teachers, administrators, and so on and so forth. Um, as I mentioned earlier, really important to make sure users are set up, whether that be teachers, students, other staff members, really important to make sure all of those users are set up. Um, we do have a webinar that will talk you through how to do that. So um, at the very end, I will show you where you can find those. But even down to your TAs, making sure that they have an Education City account so that they can do this and they can share those folders of work with you. So scroll down here, you can see I've got a couple of folders already set up just here. For different subject areas, as well as for things such as phonics, pupil premium or SEND. There isn't a limit as to how many groups you could have, nor how many um, groups a child can belong to. So do not worry about that. However, what you can do instead of creating that group, to start over again, you can edit groups. So just to show you, um, it will talk you through, click on add group, 
give the group a name. I always find it's beneficial to pop your initials at the front of the group, just because then um, it's easy to recognize which are yours. And then this might be something like my Tuesday um, a phonics group, as an example. And there we are. You can pop in some notes just there. Those notes are for you. So don't worry about anybody else, um, sort of parents and children seeing those notes. They are for you to view only. Now we can um, head over to our student area and we can look for students independently by typing their name in just here. Alternatively, you can type in the class name as it appears just here. So, for example, I could type in year one as it appears, click search, and all of those students in that year one class will appear. Then it's a, um, a case of clicking in the box next to the students that you wish to put into the group. There we go, just go for those three for now. Move them over, and you can see here students in this group there they all are it is the same process to remove a student from a group as well so i can remove that student if i wish to and you can keep going you can edit um who's within that group you can update it as you're going through as well if you wish to and then make sure that you save and you'll see now it will take us back into our groups function and that group that i've just created will be down here here it is just here and i can see which are mine because they've got my initials at the front of that grouping function there we go now if you missed any of that if you've joined us later hello welcome um but if you have missed any of that or you want to sort of refresh it you can use our help center um, this will talk you through what to do. So I can type in the word group. There we go. How to create a group. You can see I've got a video just there and I've also got a signpost. If I click on the signpost, it will quite literally talk me through how to create that group. So I'm in manage users. If I go back to this point, select groups, here I am add group and so on and so forth so it will talk you through which is quite handy there we go so making sure those users are set up and um, we do have a new way of adding teachers as well if you are thinking about adding all of your um tas into education city simply click onto the teachers section click on invite new teachers pop their email address in and invite them so you can do that for all of your um, sort of TAs if you wish to. There we go. So how can you use that group? You can use that group to monitor the last time that they logged in. You can use the group to set an assessment uh, specifically for them or to view any marked assessments or marked activities within the success tracker just here. The other thing you can do is you can actually use it to set work for. So I'm going to head into my classwork folder just here. And you can see I've already started creating a group for my Thursday's phonics group. There we go. I've popped a couple of tools in there and I can maybe add a couple more tools in via this button just here, searching for content or even via our curriculum map or subject area just here. Now, because this has been sent to, if I go into the groups function, it will tell me, here we go. These are my groups. So this has been set for my Thursday phonics group. There we go. And those are my Thursday phonics students. What I can do is I can head back to that folder and I can create a copy of this. Click in the box next to it, actions, create a copy. And I'm now going to call this one, instead of Thursday Phonics, this is going to be my Tuesday Phonics group. There we go. We're going to be doing a very similar things. So I want to keep um, the same things in there. So I don't want to keep the students the same. I want that to be unticked because I'm going to add new students into this group. There we go. I can change the icon here as well. 
So if you've got um, specific names for each of your groups in your class, or obviously you've got the labels for like science, maths, um, reading comprehension, writing, things like that. So my last group were ducklings. I'm going to call these my bumblebees. There we go. Um, going to keep it yellow because that might be um, the colour that we use, but you can't, you can't change those if you wish to. There we go. So this is my Tuesday phonics group. Make sure I save the changes. And then I'm going to head into students, head into the grouping function, and I'm going to scroll down to find that group. So I know it began with my initials. HT, Tuesday Phonics, and I'm just going to click on that orange plus sign just there, and it will add all of the students in that group into um, that assigned work. There we go. Now, if you head then to the preferences section, if you are going to give this to students, you will need to publish it, and you can do that indefinitely or schedule a time frame for the students to work on just there. And within the preferences section, you've also got other things like sequencing the work, a minimum pass rate, turning on or off the countdown timer on our activities, and um, the time limit, limit, things like that. Scroll through, have a look at those. You know your students, you know what will work best for those. And then if you've got any questions for us, get in touch. We'll be happy to help you out just there. There we go, making sure I save that and then I can start tracking where my pupils are at. There we go. And again, all this can only be done if um, the person in charge of this can log in. Now, I mentioned earlier about being able to copy. If I head back to that folder, here it is just here, I've got my Thursdays and my Tuesdays. I want to let the teacher that I'm working with know what I'm doing with that group. So I'm going to make another copy, actions, create a copy again, but this time I'm going to give this copy to the teacher. So I might just call this year one teacher for now, so that I know who it's going to. And I, in this scenario, I do want to keep the students the same because I want the teacher to know which students I'm allocating this to. So I'm going to click on to OK. It will open up the folder to see if you want to change anything, but I'm going to head back along the breadcrumb trail here. And you'll see I've got my original folder and my copy just there. Now this is where it gets really helpful because what you can then do is select the copy, click on actions and there's a button there called allocate. When you click onto that it will bring up a list of every staff member in the school who has an Education City account. So again really important that TAs, LSAs, HLTAs are set up on the account in addition to teachers. And you can go through here you can find, if you're a TA, the teacher that you're working with to show them the work that you're doing, or vice versa. If you're a teacher and you want to um, allocate some work to your TA um, and ask them to um, use that within a particular group, focus group, intervention, whatever you want to use that for, click on the person's name. You'll see that's highlighted in that blue colour and click allocate. And there we go. So now if I refresh the page, you'll see it's gone out of my folder and it will be in um, that other person's login. There we go. Again, all of this information um, will be available to you to watch in the webinar later on. Now, just before we finish, I mentioned about some of the new tools that we've got that you can use with your groups of students. So I'm gonna head into the subjects area to show you that. Starting with English and key stage one, um, you'll see that our phonics bundle has changed into our Education City phonics bundle. And within that, we've got each of our set of letters alongside a new learn screen to introduce those sounds. We still have our phase three and four and five looking at um, digraphs, split digraphs, trigraphs, whatever you want to teach. But we now have our phonics screen check. And this is something that obviously you can do with students 
if you need to. And you can record this information. We have our basic one just here and we have our um, actual phonics screen. And when you press play, you'll be able to see there's 20 questions. We've got the word, it will tell us if it's an alien word or not. And if the child is able to read it, we can click read. And we can just go through and we can see which word the child can read. And obviously clicking not read if they've maybe struggled with it. And then when you've finished, you will be able to see at the end that reports the outcome, the students, the words that they've got and um, whether or not they were able to read it. There we go. So that's something that obviously you can do alongside the um, sort of more advanced uh, phonics screen there. It's just got more difficult words in it. There we are. Now, sticking with English, we do also have um, some brand new videos for this year. And you'll find that these are reading comprehensions. We have an awful lot of cross-curricular videos as well. So you can see we've got some about Stonehenge just there, um, sort of mud huts. There we go. But we can open one of these up and you'll see we've got the video there that will read the information to the students. And then there's also an activity sheet that enables the student to read the information themselves. So again, this sort of thing you could print onto tinted paper if you've got any students struggling with dyslexia. Um, or you, obviously they can use their tint whilst they're um, reading this. And you'll see at the bottom, this is where you've got your questions for your reading comprehension. So ex explore those. There's some brilliant ones for this academic year. Um, and obviously a range of different text types as well um, for the different year groups. We've also got some brand new tools for maths. So again, please feel free to explore the different tools that are available. Um, we've obviously got our times tables just there and the multiplication tables check at the bottom as well. So again, if you wanted to practice this with a group of students, um, there would need obviously an iPad or a tablet each, but then they could go through either the 10 seconds, 20 seconds or six second one to work through. There we go. We do also have some brand new phonics, um, sorry, said phonics, um, some brand new PSHE and wellbeing tools for this academic year. You can search for those um, and a cross-curricular search content unit there. And if you haven't seen already, our curriculum map's got a bit of a new look to it. Um, it's now colour coded. Who doesn't love a bit of colour coding? Here we are. And you can see all of the activities are now blue. We've got the learn screens that are that pinky colour. I think it's our, um, an orangey shade. And our topic tools are green. There we go. And once again, you can add tools into a folder using that button as well. We do also have some brand new games for this year. So check those out. And obviously in the, um, our curriculum map, map now, we've separated our printables just in case um, you might go into lockdown or you have a student that's working from home that doesn't have access to Education City online. You can print them off just here. And you can identify which ones are printables using that function just there. So that is just about everything from me today. As always, make sure you check out our quick links as well as our free printables and that teacher resource pack. You can use our help center to answer any immediate questions that you might have. But if you're struggling, you can get in touch with us by our phone number or our email address just there. There we go. As always, all of our webinars are recorded and you can find those on our website homepage at www.educationcity.com forward slash educationcity hyphen webinars. And you'll see all of the upcoming webinars as well as all the recorded ones for you to watch in your own time.
our email address as promised feel free to get in touch if you need us um, but until next time take care and stay safe bye bye <laughs>